Kardashian civilization scale. I observe the my two cent civil the my two cent civilization scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy it's able to use. It was originally proposed by Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev in nineteen sixty four. The scale has three de has three designated categories. Overview. In general, the detailed organization and implementation of a complex organization. Logistics is the management of the flow of things between points of origin and the points of consumption in order to meet requirements of customers and cooperation and corporations. Units of measurement. There is naturally a lot of ambi ambiguity. There is naturally a lot of ambiguity with such a skill. The leap from type two to type three is immense, but this is why the scale is built upon a foundation of logistics. With physical science and engineering, manufacturing gets easier as its processes scale. This has always been true and should continue to remain true even on scales of higher, of higher dimensions. Microscopic organisms operate on a microscopic scale, are able to easily grow and expand from the microscopic to the macroscopic, being seen by the naked eye over several feet in a few days, weeks, or months. This holds true to all scales. This can expand exponentially so long as it has the infrastructure to do so. Infrastructure itself might be slow to install. But once installed, expansion becomes exponentially easier over time. The rating of these skills are described in ratios and percent ratios, which then being, which then begin to overlap. For example, the ability to harness energy from a stellar body is solar power collection. By this scale, humanity is a type one civilization. However, solar energy hitting the Earth becomes energy stored in the Earth and is not directly the energy from the sun. So now that the only so now the only technology using power from the sun are orbitals in orbit around the earth. Now solar power is just a way of harnessing energy of the earth in a form of sunlight. This can be this can be better understood in the sense that earth itself affects the efficiency with which we can harness the power of sunlight. Type zero has the technology and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness and control all of the energy of a celestial body. Type zero civilizations are capable of terraforming at the most extreme end of terraforming, a type zero civilization are able to construct entire celestial systems, building celestial and lunar worlds, placing them in stable orbits around a parent star. Type one has the technology and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness and control all of the energy of a stellar body. Type one civilizations have the logistical capability to harvest all of the matter resources of a solar system on a celestial scale. Type one civilizations possess the technology required to engage in star lifting as well as Dyson sphere construction. At the most extreme end, a type one civilization are able to construct entire stellar systems, constructing stellar celestial and lunar bodies, placing them together to create complete stellar systems. Type two has a technology, has a technology and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness and control all of the energy of a galactic body. Type two civilizations are recognized by their logistical capability with regards to the manipulation at a galactic scale possessing the technology to create, destroy, and relocate stellar and celestial bodies to include their system. What is really a hallmark of a type two civilization is its mastery over gravity and infrastructure to safely and effectively harness and control all the energy of a black hole. The fabric of small black holes, the fabrication of small black holes are the introduction to becoming a type two civilization. Supermassive black holes at the galactic core are the, ho are the holy grail, a kind of star lifting Galactic lifting can be done for the matter and energy at the core of a black hole. This allows for a galaxy to be more. This allows for galaxies. To this allows for galaxies to be moved, in or even dismantled for harvesting. Type three has a, has a technological and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness and control all of the energy of the whole universe. Universes are comprised of space time, their contents, to include all of the forces and co constants which govern them. Celestial bodies, stellar bodies, and galactic objects, as well as all other forms of matter and energy. Within the whole universe, a verse is a commonly shared ontology of observable, knowable, universal scale, cosmological objects, and cosmological systems, separated by the threshold of its bosonic limitation. Individual verses collectively all share within the same physical ontology which they inherit from their parent universe. The verse is a pocket of child space time isolated and encompassed within its parent universe. The threshold of this encompassing physical phenomenon is the whole universe. At first glance to this, you would perceive a type three civilization as being intergalactic, but the most notable capability of this civilization is their ability to travel beyond the bosonic limitation of their ever expanding visible slash knowable verse. To be clear, a type three civilization 
is able to manipulate and control the whole universe and has the logistics to travel to other whole ver- universes. The largest cosmological structure we can, we as sentient sapiens beings are able to fathom is our universe. We know that every point in our universe is expanding outward from every other point. We know that there is a maximum distance that we can observe from our planets. We imply that extraterrestrial species residing on their home planet within our whole universe also have a maximum distance that they can observe from their home planet. When it is possible for these maximum distances to overlap, it also becomes possible for extraterrestrial interaction within these commonly defined overlapping maximum distances. This is what is implied by the notion of a verse. A verse is the best way to perceive the universe as a whole. When treated as a system, these interactions as a whole give rise to the landscape of the universe. What is important about a verse is that all verses share uniformly to the physical laws and constants which govern their parent universes within which they reside. A verse is a child to its parent whole universe. Type 5 Type 5 have the technology and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness and control all of the energy of an existence. A verse is a child of the whole universe. The whole universe is akin to a verse in relation to existence and is a child of existence. The existence of infinite pockets of whole universes within a commonly shared infinite dimensional locality. In this infinite field, anything, in imag- anything imaginable can and indeed would have to occur. This, mean that, this means that there would be whole universes identical to the one you inhabit as well as whole universes identical to every fictional world ever imagined slash created. The whole universe where within you exist is isolated and separate from a fictional universe where within an ontological in- where within an ontological entity would exist and reside. Relative to its existence, we do not exist and thus are imaginary in every right of the term. The ground state threshold between and separating these two whole universes is best defined as existence. What is existence? Existence is the aggregate of parallel whole universes. Existence is the many world interpretation. Its branching quantum states give rise to parallel universes. Within each branching universe, are further branching quantum states giving rise to parallel universes. Type 5 Type 5 Type 5 have the technology and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness all of the energy of a multiverse. The multiverse is the ground state of parallel existence. The transcendent interactions which occur between parallel existence occur within the multiverse. Type 6 Type 6 has the technology and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness all of the energy of an omniverse. The omniverse is the ground state of parallel multiverses. The transcendent interaction which occur between multiverses occur within the omniverse. Type 7 Type 7 has the technology and infrastructure to safely and efficiently harness all of the energy of an omni-existence. Omni-existence is the ground state of parallel omniverses. The transcendent interaction which occur between omniverses occur within the omni-existence. Type 8 Type 8 civilizations do not exist as there is only nothingness outside of omni-existence. Transcendent Cosmology it can be stated that organic beings are a byproduct of complex interaction between dynamic systems. A single proton is an entity whose existence is comprised of the interaction between other complex entities. We call these entities quarks. The interaction between, between quarks gives rise to subatomic particles. The interaction between subatomic particles gives rise to atoms, which form the chemical elements. The interaction between chemical elements gives rise to chemistry and with it matter. It's chemistry and chemical interactions that ultimately give rise to cosmological scales. The interaction between lunar bodies and celestial bodies give rise to celestial systems. The interaction between celestial systems and stellar bodies gives rise to stellar systems. The interaction between stellar systems gives rise to open clusters, gobbler clusters, and stellar associations. Stellar clusters are themselves dynamic systems. The interaction between them gives rise to galaxies. The interaction between galax- galactic systems gives rise to galactic groups which give rise to galactic clusters. At the largest square of scales, the interaction between galactic clusters give rise to galactic filaments, separated by galactic voids. The interaction between galactic filaments and galactic voids are too vast and too complex for us to directly observe or comprehend. What can be stated plainly, however, is that the indefiniteness of our knowable slash observable universe is a byproduct of the interaction between verse systems. A verse is a finite region of space-time encompassed by the expansion of the fabric of space-time exceeding the speed of light. It takes a whole. Taken taken as a whole, the interaction between verses gives rise to the whole universe. If we postulate that the universe as we know it is comprised of physical matter, physical forces, dimensional locality, space, and dimensional temporality time, then we can also state that dimensional locality and dimensional temporality, which lacks sufficient 
physical matter and physical forces are non-universal systems through which whole universes can interact. This interaction which occurs within a system are defined by that system. The interactions which the interactions within a verse are versal interactions. The external interaction between verses occur through the system within which they reside. A verse as a system resides within a universe. The universe interaction occurs between verses. Likewise, existential interactions occur between universes. Multiversal interactions occur between omniverses. Omniexistent interactions occur between omniverses. Interactions are a shorthand way of saying physical, mechanical, and dynamic, for it is easy to take for granted. If we consider that the human body is comprised of cells, which are comprised of organic chemistry, etc., etc., it's easy to get lost in the rabbit hole of complex systems giving rise to higher and higher levels of complexity. At scales as vast as our universe, it's difficult to rationalize how civilizations would be able to implement infrastructure of any kind at this level of existence. At these scales, interpretation is purely subjective. What can be known is limited to the imagination inherent to each of them.